Welcome everyone. I'm Luis Ladeira and in this video I'll demonstrate how to use Cell Designer to create models describing molecular interactions. Specifically, we will explore its applications in the context of the Ontox project. These models have been developed to integrate physiological maps, supporting a range of tasks in the development of new approach methodologies for next-generation risk assessment in toxicology. You can learn more about the Ontox project and the physiological maps in our dedicated video on these topics. You can find the link in the video description below. It's important to note that while this tutorial focuses on toxicology, the content and techniques covered can be applied to design molecular interaction models for any purpose. Cell Designer is a powerful tool for creating molecular interaction models. It utilizes a standard notation that enables us to design and visualize pathways effectively. While it's important to note that the software may not be fully compliant with SBGN, the system's biology graph connotation, due to several reasons, it provides an equivalent reference table. Additionally, Cell Designer supports its own software-specific SBGN notation, which can be translated into pure SBGN. To access the current reference table, please visit the Cell Designer website. You will find the link in the description below. Furthermore, you can download Cell Designer for free from the official website where you will also find tutorials covering both basic and advanced features. Now, let's dive into Cell Designer and explore its capabilities. First, let's familiarize ourselves with the software interface. At the top, we have the main menu, providing various options. In the Files section, you can create a new canvas open and save projects and export them in different formats, including CSV tables and various SBML and image formats. The Edit menu offers options to make the grid visible, aiding in organizing the elements. In Cell Designer, we call the nodes as a species. In the Complement menu, you can conveniently search for species within your map, making it easier to locate specific elements. Additionally, you have the ability to edit various aspects of your model, including the model description and the addition of myriad annotations to your entire model simultaneously. Now, let's move on to the View menu, where you'll find several useful options to enhance your experience. With the zoom functionality, you can easily fine-tune the zoom level to suit your specific needs. In case you are working with a large map, the bird's eye view feature can be extremely helpful, enabling you to quickly navigate and locate specific areas on your map. Additionally, you have the option to double the visibility of reaction IDs. Sometimes, it's beneficial to keep them unchecked to avoid overloading visuals on your app. Finally, let's briefly discuss the Reduced Notation menu. This feature becomes particularly valuable if you are utilizing the Activity Flow language from SBGN. It allows you to simplify the representation of your model, but let's keep it invisible for now. The Database menu allows you to import models from external databases, and the Layout menu helps you automatically reorganize your map using different algorithms. Additionally, the Simulation menu connects you to the Cobasi software for dynamic model simulation. Within the Preference menu, you have the power to modify different aspects of your visualizations. For instance, you can adjust the font style and size of the text displayed on your map, ensuring optimal readability. Additionally, you can fine-tune the settings for each graphical element, creating a standardized appearance for all the components you incorporate into your diagrams. Once you set a specific color for a protein or any other element, 
new elements of the same time will adopt this new color while retaining the default colors for our components. Within the second menu, you'll find a collection of handy shortcuts providing quick access to key functions we discussed in the top menu. These shortcuts include creating a new project, opening, saving, and printing your work. Additionally, there is an undo button to reverse any recent changes, as well as options for cutting, copying, pasting, and snapping elements into place. Now, let's focus on the species menu. Here, you can find various systems biology species, including proteins, genes, RNAs, compounds, phenotypes, and even unknown elements. Furthermore, there is a possibility for designing complex formations and representing complexes, along with a degradation option. The next menu is for reactions and edges. It represents the connections between nodes in your network. Reactions can be represented by state transitions, catalysis reactions, and more. We also have different types of edges to denote associations, dissociations, and other interactions. The first menu option is the state transition edge, which includes a process glyph from the process description language of the system's biology graph connotation. This process is represented by a white square at the center of the edge. You can find this in our edge options in this menu as well. Additionally, we have various representations for reactions such as unknown transition, transcription, translation, transport, association, dissociation, and truncation. Also, there are options that allow us to add reactants and products to a reaction. Moving on, let's check the reaction menu. This menu is specifically designed to represent different types of reactions that we can draw within our graphical representation of molecular interactions. The first option is catalysis, which connects the reaction edge to the process cliff. Additionally, we have options for unknown catalysis, inhibition, unknown inhibition, physical stimulation, modulation, and trigger. These edges are used to connect species that modulate a process to a specific reaction. In the subsequent menu, we encounter Boolean logic gates, which are associated with logical operators, such as AND, OR, and not. These gates allow us to incorporate logical functions into our model, adding another layer of complexity and accuracy. The next menu focuses on compartments, which are essential for representing distinct spaces within our model. For example, we can create compartments to represent subcellular compartments, organelles, extracellular spaces like the extracellular matrix, or even clusters within our network. Compartments provide a means to organize reactions and within defined spaces. Now let's explore the bottom panels of Cell Designer. The left panel contains tables that display information about various components of our model, including species, reactions, compartments, and our parameters or function rules that we've incorporated. These tables can be exported for further analysis using different software tools, allowing for comprehensive investigation and exploration of our model. In the right panel, we find two different tabs. The first tab is dedicated to notes, and the second tab is specifically designed for including Mirian annotations. Mirian stands for minimum information required in the annotation of models and provides a standardized method for annotating our models using persistent identifiers from a diverse list of databases. 
With myriad annotations, we can enrich our model by linking the components to external databases maintained and updated by the community. To add an annotation to a node, simply click on the desired node, click on Add Relation, and choose the appropriate database. Select the identifier you wish to include, such as a cap ID for a compound, for instance. Now let's move on to annotating reactions. When annotating reactions, we often utilize scientific sources that describe the interaction. This can be achieved by including a PubMed ID or a DOI for the paper describing that reaction. Cell Designer provides a variety of relations that we can use to accurately describe our annotations. These annotations will be saved alongside your model, ensuring that all the essential information is preserved. Now that we have a better understanding of the software, it's time to put our knowledge to practice by designing a simple reaction set. This will allow us to explore the features we've just learned in Cell Designer. To begin, let's create a new canvas for our diagram. Select the File menu and click on New. In the dialog box, you can customize the name of the file and adjust the dimensions in pixels. For now, let's stick with the standard settings. We will use the human cholesterol biosynthesis pathway as an example to learn how to use the software. Now that we have our canvas ready, we can start adding the elements. First, let's create a compound and name it acetylcoenzyme A or acetylcoa. We'll also design another compound called HMG coenzyme A or HMG CoA. Acetyl CoA converts to HMG CoA, so let's connect to them. To connect the nodes, we'll need edges, which are represented by connection arrows. Similar to nodes, we have a wide range of edges types available. For simplicity, let's focus on the state transition and the catalysis reaction for now. This reaction is catalyzed by the action of the enzyme HMGCS1, so we can use a catalysis edge to connect our enzyme, represented here using a generic protein node, to a process glyph in the state transition arrow connecting our compounds. This represents the first step in the cholesterol biosynthesis pathway. In order to complete this reaction, we need to include another reactant. We'll add the second compound, acetoacetylcoenzyme A, as a reactant in the reaction. This completes the representation of the state transition catalyzed by 8MGCS1. It is important to annotate our connections with persistent identifiers which help us trace back the origin of the information we used. By properly annotating the connection, we ensure accuracy and reliability in our model. For this, we can use a rare ID for this specific reaction and annotate it in the Mirian tab. Another possibility would be to annotate with a PubMed ID or a DOI from a paper describing the interaction. Now that we have our first reaction done and annotated, let's save our file. Remember to save your file regularly to avoid losing any progress. To save, go to the top menu, click on File, then select Save. Choose the desired location, provide the name for your file, and save it. You also have the option to expand your canvas. In the component menu, under model information, you can adjust the width and the height of your canvas to accommodate more reactions. This allows for more space for a comprehensive representation of the entire cholesterol biosynthesis pathway. Take your time and familiarize yourself with the software. Practice representing the entire pathway by drawing all the reactions.
you can take the weak pathways cholesterol biosynthesis example to practice. The link can be found at this video description. Once you've completed the pathway, you can apply automatic layouts to optimize the arrangement of your elements. Feel free to experiment with different layout options to find what works best for you. However, it's important to note that for large pathways or complex maps, automatic layouts may not always provide the most human-friendly representation. Organizing layout manually can be time-consuming, but essential for ensuring clear comprehension of a map. After completing the entire cholesterol biosynthesis pathway, remember to save your file in different formats to allow reusability and consider exporting it as an image for easier sharing. In this tutorial, we cover the basics of using Cell Designer to create molecular interaction diagrams. To delve deeper and explore advanced features, check out our previous videos about physiological maps and our next video on the Mineva platform, an interactive platform for map visualization and exploration. You can find the links in the description below. Thank you for joining us in this introductory cell designer tutorial. Stay curious, keep experimenting and continue unraveling the fascinating world of pathway curation.